Well, if you've been following Bible study on my website for very long, you know that the Paris Peace Initiative is about ready to commence for 2017 on January the 15th. And there will be around 70 countries who will attend. And it's been stated that the countries that attend uh, this conference will call uh, Netanyahu and Abbas to publicly renew their commitment to the two-state solution. So basically, it sounds like to me it's more of the same and that they're trying to get Israel and uh, the Palestinian Authority to sit down and renew some type of peace talks again. Now, it doesn't look like that their agenda is going to include uh, creating borders or trying to put in cement any type of stat final status type of information. So I don't look for it to be as uh, potent as I thought it might be when uh, on December 23rd, the U.S. did not veto uh, a resolution that the U.N. came up with. And, you know, the, uh, now Stratford has also come up with their own forecast and what they believe will happen in 2017. Here are three bullet points that they have proposed, and I will also put this on the screen. It says, number one is deep internal fracturing on both sides of the conflict and differing visions for its solution will undermine new efforts to bring Israeli and Palestinian leaders to the negotiating table this year. Two, stronger U.S. support for Israel will drive efforts in the Palestinian Authority uh, to accrue support from powerful countries in the region uh, that back its cause, such as Turkey, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. But these countries, number three, uh, regional economic interests, along with their stance toward Iran, will prevent a significant shift in their support for the Palestinian Authority. In other words, the Palestinian Authority is going to try to enlist such countries as Turkey, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia to stand with them in their quest for a new Palestinian state. And they may indeed say some uh, meaningless statement, or whatever the case may be, but because of their fear against uh, Iran, uh, and they want to keep Israel in their fold, they won't necessarily uh, say anything that's going to change much. You know, another thing uh, that uh, uh, Stratford says that really basically what happened on uh, December 23rd is strictly meaningless. And not only is it meaningless, but uh, this is something that they also made mention of. It says the Palestinian Authority, meanwhile, lacks a government coherent enough to agree on a solution to, pres to present to Israel. The two most prominent Palestinian political parties, Fatah and Hamas, envision entirely different outcomes for the in, uh, enduring struggle. Fatah's two-state solution is far too conciliatory for Hamas, which espouses uh, violent opposition to Israel. And even though they attempted to try to have uh, some type of a conciliatory agreement, in 2016 it fell apart. And not only that, uh, Palestinian leader uh, Abbas is uh, probably in his last few years as leader and they're really having a hard time finding his replacement. But going on what uh, Stratford had said, yet nevertheless the international community will once again try to force the two parties to meet and hash out their differences in yet more negotiations this year starting in, with the January 15th Paris Peace Conference. Already the conference has failed in its principal endeavor to coax the two sides of the conflict into the same room to discuss the situation. Prominent Israeli and Palestinian leaders have yet to confirm their attendance, and Israel has dismissed the conference as futile out of hand. Planning meetings for the Paris Peace Conference uh, have so far focused on attainable goals such as supporting civil society organizations and supplying monetary aid. But prospects are dim for progress on the conflict's main challenges. Though Israel's borders and settlements have commanded international attention, they are internal issues that, are, uh, that only the Israeli government has the power to address. UN Security Council resolutions, such as the controversial December 23rd measure that declared Israel's settlements in the West Bank illegitimate, will do little to curb Israel's settlement building in the West Bank. That's what uh, Stratford had to say about that. The country, which is Israel, does not heed non-binding UN resolutions. Even so, the U.S. administration's refusal to veto the measure ruffled the feathers in Israel. Uh, similarly, they will not prevent Palestinians from launching retaliatory attacks against 
the perceived Israeli occupation. Solutions to the conflicts, security, and refugee crisis will prove equally elusive. Now, of course, we know uh, a new uh, president is going to be taking uh, the helm at the U.S. White House very soon. It says, as the peace process continues to flounder, Donald Trump is preparing to assume the U.S. presidency. Now, this is the wild card. Trump and his pick for the new U.S. ambassador to Israel have criticized President Barack Obama's stance toward the country and pledged to increase their support for Israel and its activities in the West Bank. Although Israeli leaders from across the political spectrum have embraced the incoming administration, Trump's policies toward Israel will not have much effect on its, con its conflict with the Palestinian Authority. If Trump follows through with, on his promise to move the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, he risks provoking backlash from Middle East countries that support the Palestinian Authority. But most of these states are reluctant to jeopardize their interests confronting Israel or the United States. Now, in closing, this is what Stratford had to say. He said, over the past five decades, the international community has repeatedly tried to bring Israeli and Palestinian leaders together to find a mutual agreeable solution to their dispute to no avail. The stark divides between, the, uh, between and within the two sides will doom the upcoming Paris Peace uh, Conference to be the uh, latest failed attempt to negotiate an end to the persistent conflict. Now this is what the intelligence, intelligence community has to say about the upcoming 2017 attempt to bring peace to the Middle East. Now of course uh, again, there's the, the wild card of, of Donald Trump, who is a, appears to be a big supporter of Israel. So we really don't know where this is going to lead and, and, and at what point this is going to either fall by the wayside or uh, go full speed ahead. You know, one of the things that I've always had uh, an eye on is this right here, is that when Mr. Trump won the election, and looking at his leadership abilities compared to the leaders that are across the world, it is uh, for certain, as far as I'm concerned, that he is the top dog in the world community. And what I mean by saying that is that I don't see anybody on the horizon over the next eight years coming to power that's going to uh, take his uh, place as a Middle East broker of peace. And if, in fact, he is in office for the next eight years, can you imagine somebody coming up out of the European Union? Now, the reason why I, pick me, uh, I br bring in the European Union is because that that is really where the Bible says that the Antichrist will rise up out of and that he would bring peace. But looking at what, what I'm looking at is that, that I don't see anybody coming, and, coming in and taking over the helm of the Middle East peace process that will come out of the European Union. But I do want you to keep in mind that is what the Bible says that this particular leader will rise up out of. Now, I know though there are those out there who believe that uh, the United States may indeed be a part of this Ten Kingdom nation group for which the Antichrist will rise out of, and that could be possible. But it's probably not probable because that's simply not what the Bible specifically states. But if you want to stretch it a little bit, you could include the United States. There are also those who, be who believe in a, in a type of a cons conspiracy theory that says and states that the world has already been broken up into 10 different regions. Well, frankly, that conspiracy theory is old news, and I simply don't give it much credence or support as far as I'm concerned. It's simply not biblical. But the evangelical world, unfortunately, and, and you know what, it crosses over even into the secular world where you have preppers and others who kind of take a portion of Bible prophecy and try to mix it with their prepper th uh, allergy. But the bottom line is this right here. If it's not in the Bible, it's simply not true is when it comes to Bible prophecy. And I have to say there's a ton of stuff out there that simply is believed to be Bible prophecy, but it's not. And I don't have time to go into it because the bottom line is it take, it, it'd be, I'd be, that'd be the only thing I'd be able to talk about for the next year. And speaking of conspiracy theories, we, I should probably also mention that uh, Mr. Trump has named Jared Kushner his son-in-law, to be a senior advisor, and he'll probably uh, focus on Middle East. Now, of course, Mr. Trump will have to get uh, th past some of the anti-nepotism laws that have been established. But when it's all said and done, he will probably be in the position that Mr. Trump has slated him for. But here's something that probably will turn into, if it hasn't already, into a conspiracy theory. Let me read this to you. It says, The New York Times reported on Saturday that Kushner 
who will turn 36 on Tuesday, has been pursuing a real estate deal with a company that has close ties to the Chinese government while also advising the president-elect. Now, here's the conspiracy theory. It says Kushner has been handling negotiations with the Anbang Insurance Group over a project to rebuild a skyscraper at 666 Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, a property owned by the Kushner family's real estate company, according to the Times. Now, I guarantee you somebody's going to take this and is going to run as far as they possibly can. But frankly put, this has nothing to do with Bible prophecy. But many in the world of, of sensationalism will take this and try to say that's uh, going to be the headquarters of the Antichrist. But this is what I mean by taking uh, today's Bible prophecy and really sens sensationalizing it and trying to create something out of nothing. But I would, it will be interesting to see exactly what part that Mr. Kushner does play in the Trump administration and also how much of a part he will play also in Middle East peace talks. But I just wanted to give you a well-rounded, non-sensationalist look at what we're looking at for the year 2017, where the peace talks could be going. And one thing is for sure that you need to realize. One thing that these uh, news reports don't take into account is the rapture of the church. That could take place at any moment. You know, when I take information from Stratford, that is, a, that is an intelligence point of view that doesn't take into consideration things that we in the Bible prophecy world do. So like I said, such as the rapture of the church and the beginning of the tribulation period, the Antichrist, and things of that nature. And certainly these uh, intelligence sources don't take into consideration uh, what they believe because they don't, simply don't know uh, what Mr. Trump's going to do and what kind of success that he will have. You know, at the end of the year, Stratford will have an end-of-the-year review to see how well they did. And even though they usually do pretty good, they're not 100%. They're only human, and they simply can't get everything right. So that's why we'll have to wait and see how Mr. Trump and where he heads and what he does uh, for the year 2017. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You should not, if you don't know the Lord, take another day without coming to know him before it's everlasting too late. You know, you could die today because 150,000 people will die today. And the Bible is clear that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. You know, once you're in hell, you can't get out. So I would recommend to you and encourage you to take that step and to accept Jesus as your Savior today. Just call upon his name, believe that he died for your sins, repent and turn to him. And you Christians, you need to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide in the hands of your lost loved ones, your friends, your neighbors, as quickly as possible. You know, there's two versions that you can uh, have. One is the free version, which is written in nine different languages. And it can simply be downloaded uh, at your convenience. There's no charge to you. All you have to do is just download it. And we all, I also have a paperback version. You know, you can give this paperback version to your lost friend, loved one, before the rapture takes place and maybe they'll get saved beforehand it won't be the first time that's happened so i would encourage you to do so uh, as quickly as possible well this is terry malone with the calvary prophecy report